Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Salem. But, yeah. Uh, my name is Dominic Pangallo. I am the mayor of Salem. Happy November. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Governor Healy, uh, Secretary Tutwiler, Commissioner Ortega, distinguished guests, it's great to have you all with us. Lieutenant Governor, welcome back to your home court. <laughs> it's a pleasure to join you all this morning and especially here at Salem State University. Since 1854, this place has been such an integral part of our community. It's enriched and enlivened our city, and it's positively shaped and influenced the lives of generations of students, some of whom may be with us on this stage. From humble roots at the, as the Salem Normal School to what is today the largest institution of higher education on the North Shore, we're proud to be the hometown of the Vikings. Salem State is embedded in our city in so many important ways and in positive ways whether it's student teachers in our public schools or civic engagement partnerships, whether it's the expertise of faculty and staff who volunteer on city boards, or access for our residents to award-winning arts programming and high-caliber college athletics. Salem State's impact on Salem is profound and positive. The university's alumni are our workforce, our entrepreneurs, our educators, and our leaders. And Salem is not alone in seeing that. There isn't a Massachusetts city or town that doesn't benefit in some way from the graduates of our public higher education institutions. They're shaping our future. At an incredible rate, they choose to stay in this special place. They keep contributing to our commonwealth even after they've graduated. There's something special about our public higher ed graduates. That deep bond to the places where they studied, where they made discoveries, made art, made connections. Those are also the places where they make careers, where they make a difference, places like Salem. We're fortunate to have leaders here in Massachusetts like Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll who value public education, including public higher education, who are working to break down the systemic barriers that exist between our young adults or older adults for that matter and the pathways to access high quality, life-changing educational opportunities for everyone. I'm so excited for today's announcement which will open those pathways to even more of our residents. And I'm thrilled to introduce and invite up my partner in this shared cause a leader of tremendous integrity and passion for higher education, a son of Salem and a dear friend and former boss of mine, Salem State University President John Keenan. I wasn't gonna mention anything about being your former boss, but just remember that. Um, welcome, welcome everybody. It is so wonderful to have you here today. And, and Mayor Pangallo, thank you so much for your strong leadership following in the footsteps of our former mayor as well in making sure that Salem and Salem State University work together on so many fronts for this wonderful, wonderful community. So for those of you not familiar with this hall, this is Recital Hall in uh, business school. So late Senator Fred Berry in 1994, uh, working with uh, the, pre the governor at the time and the Senate president, uh, was able to acquire this old Osram Sylvania site for Salem State through the Assistance Corporation. And today, uh, we're here for this wonderful announcement in what used to be the boiler room of Osram Sylvania, but more importantly, is also now host to our business school, which is the only AACSB accredited business school in the State un University fleet. The last, time, the last time, Governor, I was in this hall, we were announcing a huge project for Salem State. Right? Project Bold, which is over a $100 million project, and I want to thank you both for your support for that outstanding project. Perhaps we should change it to the Good News Hall, right? It's not Recital Hall, it's the Good News Hall. So wonderful, wonderful to be here today, and I want to thank you, Governor, certainly as a Viking. Uh, you may not know, but the Governor got an honorary degree in 2015, so as an honorable Viking. Uh, our very own Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who was a Viking from the class of, can I say it, 1989? <laughs> right? People can do the math. People can do the math. Um, of course, I want to welcome the secretary as well and the commissioner and all of my other colleagues here from, from higher education. It is such a wonderful, wonderful day at Salem State. I want to recognize, as, as you may know, uh, I'm the chair of the Council of Presidents. Um, there's nine state universities in the Commonwealth by this year, by 
uh, I guess by seniority, uh, I am the chair of the, of the Council of Presidents. One of my colleagues, Rich Lapidus from Fre Fitchburg State, is with us. I thought I saw you out there, President Lapidus. Thank you for joining us. Um, he has announced his retirement, uh, but nonetheless, we're, we're glad to have you here and thank you for your leadership out in Fitchburg. Uh, I'm also pleased to welcome many other colleagues from higher education. Certainly President Martin Meehan for joining us here today, making the trek to Salem. <laughs> President Jim Vanderhoeven from Mount Wachusett Community College, who's my cohort in crime, if you will, with the community college. And of course, I want to recognize, most importantly, who we're here to celebrate today, our students, Nick Alves. So thank you for joining us. We have lots of alumni working uh, up on Beacon Hill now, a couple of them with us today. Tom Walsh, representative from PB, is with us. He's the class of 1983. I won't do that math, but that's 40 years, representative. <laughs> representative Manny Cruz is with us as well. He's got the orange tie on. <laughs> representative Cruz started his career here and attributes much of his success right, to how God is beginning here at Salem State. So thank you for joining us. I know Senator Lovely's team is with us today. I know there's some things going on on Beacon Hill, but I know Senator Lovely's team is with us as well. And I think Senator Joe Comerford is with us as well, too. Thank you for joining us. So thank you, thank you all for joining us here today. And as I said earlier, um, we do respect civic engagement on our campus. And we are fortunate enough to hear from some of our students just earlier today before we came into the hall. Uh, on an issue that's near and dear to their heart. So I want to thank you for your patience uh, and cooperation as they had the opportunity to express themselves. Now the cornerstone of the Healy Driscoll administration is making Massachusetts competitive again. And that starts with affordability on many fronts. They've made historic investments in housing and today will announce similarly historic investments in public higher education that will make Massachusetts more competitive by making uh, higher education here in the Commonwealth affordable for many more in the Commonwealth. We know that Massachusetts is the most educated state in the country with the highest level of college attainment. While certainly proud of our private institutions, we also know that we in the public system, UMass, my community college colleagues, and us in the, Salem, in the state university system, we are educating tomorrow's workforce as our students stay here in the Commonwealth after graduation. Most of our students are paying their own way through college to obtain their dream of earning an associate's or a bachelor's degree. These students are working one, two, and sometimes three jobs to make their dream a reality. Well, with today's announcement, we hope to change all that by making higher education more affordable in the Commonwealth. So only a few months ago, we gathered with Governor Healy, the Lieutenant Governor, the Senate President, President Glenn, up in Northern Essex to celebrate the passage of tuition equity in this year's budget. As a result, I'm extremely proud to announce today that Salem State just sound, signed a memorandum of understanding with the Dream.us initiative for undocumented students. This program this program will offer 10 full scholarships to Salem State for 10 undocumented students on our campus. <laughs> Salem, State, Salem State will proudly be the first partner in the Commonwealth to have such a partnership. And we will in all likelihood next fall become the first Hispanic serving inst institution, a four year public institution in the Commonwealth next September. So I want, to thank, I want to thank the Healy Driscoll administration for their efforts, and especially today. As the supplemental budget makes its way through Beacon Hill, working with President Meehan and his team, we appreciate your full funding of the labor contracts, as that too is an essential element for keeping higher education affordable here in the Commonwealth, and for making sure that our, our faculty, our staff, are duly compensated on our campuses. So thank you for that support as well. And thank you, President Meehan. So thank you, thank you again for coming to Recital Hall, Good News Hall perhaps. Um, I ask you all to join us if you'd like afterward in a cafe outside here for some uh, treats. Um, now I'd like to welcome Honorary Viking Governor Healy to the podium. But before I do that, I'd like to say here, 
I hope to invite you back for good news in this hall one more time when we announce the South Salem, Salem State train stop, which is another piece of affordability <laughs> and accessibility to Salem State. Governor Healy, thank you. Yes, President Keenan, you still got it. <laughs> you know how it works. Um, it is, uh, thank you so much for that introduction and thank you to Salem State University for hosting the LG and, and I and our team here today for what we believe is a really important announcement and something to really, really celebrate. Uh, Mayor, great to see you and uh, congratulations on, you know, get through October and, and on, to other, on to other things. <laughs> I know somebody was really happy she didn't have to mind that this year. <laughs> um, but, uh, but look, we are, uh, are here as a team. And again, President Keenan, thank you so much for your leadership, uh, what you and your colleagues do. Many are represented from our state universities, from our community colleges, great leaders, all of you in your own rights, um, doing wonderful work across campuses all over the state. And on behalf of all of us in the administration, we are grateful to each and every one of you for the work that you're doing. Um, on our campuses, and that includes you as well, President Meehan, and um, all that is happening in our wonderful UMass system. So thank you for, for joining us here today and joining us. Um, you know, I am, um, it's really fun for me to be back uh, uh, to Salem State. I did have a chance to be here uh, years ago uh, for a commencement, uh, but to be able to come back with my teammate and your Lieutenant Governor, uh, literally we uh, just we were over at the basketball court a minute ago, uh, where she had many, many years of success. So it's great to be able to, to be back here with you this morning. And uh, we were joined by a couple other teammates too, our fabulous Secretary of Education, Pat Tutwiler, and our Commissioner of Higher Education, Noe Ortega. Thank you and your teams for everything that you do. I want to thank uh, our chair of our Board of Higher Education, Chris Gabrielli, for his work and his support and inspiration uh, for this program. We're joined today by Cindy Mack, who's chair of the Student Advisory Council for the Board of Higher Ed, along with others at BHE, and we thank you. Uh, we thank our elected officials uh, with whom we do this work. It's great to see you all, Reps Walsh and Cruz, and I believe we have, uh, in addition to Senator Comerford, chair of higher ed, we also have with us uh, Chair Dave Rogers, um, and thank you as well to members of Senator Joan Lovely's team for all you do day in and day out. And of course, the most important people in the room, the students. Thank you for coming out. We look forward to hearing from you, Nick. Um, this is about you, and this is about the recognition that you know we believe in the transformative power of our public colleges and universities in Massachusetts to educate the next generation of our state's leaders and innovators. Uh, to provide access to higher education for first-generation students, for lower-income students, students of color, um, as a means to develop our workforce and provide talent and energy for industries all across this state. So we are committed to growing uh, this impact across our 15 community colleges, nine state universities, and five campuses of the University of Massachusetts. We're also committed to saving money for people in Massachusetts. And so today, we're taking that commitment and turning it into action, using funds that we dedicated in this year's budget in partnership with the legislature, we will now be able to, as a state, cover the full cost of tuition and fees for all lower income students, both full-time and part-time in the state of Massachusetts. <laughs> It, uh, it's, it's really great. So everybody, full-time, part-time, tuition and fees are gonna be covered. 
and also students will be provided $1,200 as an allowance for books and other supplies, which you know is so important as well. What this means, I'm glad, we're glad you like it, um, because this means that for the first time, we're providing what is effectively a free college education for all Pell Grant eligible students in Massachusetts. Families with incomes under $73,000 will no longer have to scratch and save to come up with money for an education. This is a big deal. It's important to the LG and me. It's important to Secretary Tutwiler and Commissioner Ortega. It's important to the Board of Higher Ed making this happen. And so today, we're delighted to be here in Recital Hall to announce a $62 million expansion of the Mass Grant Plus Financial Aid Program, which serves students at our public colleges and universities. Uh, this new aid is gonna be effective immediately and also retroactively for this fall semester. Yeah. And we hope, we're projecting that around 25,000 current students are going to be the beneficiaries of this program. So really, really excited. You know, Massachusetts, we pride ourselves in being first in education, home to the first public school, public library. You know, we've been leaders in that space. And this is about living up to that, living up to that ideal. Um, you can be a leader in education, but you're not a leader in education if you're not a leader in access to education, right? That's what this is about. And, and that's why, you know, we recognize that the costs have gone up um, on so many fronts. And this team, our office, we're really dedicated to an affordability agenda. You saw that earlier this year. Uh, when we look to when we look to expand access to pre-k and affordable child care school breakfast and lunch for every kid in the state uh, the most generous universal child independent tax credit in the entire country paying off loans for those who were doing work in primary care and behavioral health care all around the state our mass reconnect program which now makes community college free to everyone 25 years and older. And I know already we have seen significant increases in enrollment simply by making education more affordable. That's what today is all about. Our Mass Grant Plus expansion is a big step forward. It's gonna save families money. It's gonna provide opportunity. It's what we should be doing. And I know we feel very comfortable making this investment because of the faith that we have in our public colleges and universities in Massachusetts. Uh, tremendous faith and confidence in all of them. And again, I thank you um, as leaders for being with us here today. And I am now really tickled to be able to bring to the podium uh, Salem State's own uh, One Great Viking for not just Salem, but for the entire Commonwealth. We couldn't do what we do without Kim Driscoll. And I want you to give her a rousing round of applause. Thank you. am I to work with this teammate every day, right? Thank you guys. It's so great to be on campus. You know, for my first day on the campus of Salem State, you could feel the energy, like the hope and the opportunity that existed in this place. And I still feel it today every time I step on campus. And frankly, so many of our public higher ed institutions that are doing so much to move Massachusetts forward. Before, um, before we were here on, on Central Campus, we had a chance to um, head down to the O'Keefe Center and frankly meet with some of our, our men's hoop team. And all of you know because this is a campus and is a community and we feel for each other when there are good things happening like today and when there are tragedies and losing somebody like Carl hens Belliard, first year member of the men's hoop team here. Carl really touched us. He played uh, for Worcester North. He was a hoop player. They won the state championship. First time Worcester actually had a state championship and the whole team came to celebrate at the State House, and Carl was the only senior on the team. So I got to spend some time with him, and he was coming to Salem State, all right? So we got some 
you know, a chance to spend some time with him, get to know him a little bit. He had a smile that just lit up the room. And we lost him, like, tragically here. And the way the team has come together and Salem State has really celebrated um, what he meant and what um, his life meant and what those opportunities are touched our heart, brought the team together, the coaches together. And I think it speaks volumes for what this place means in people's lives. When there are great things that happen, and there are lots of them, and when there are not so great things that happen, um, this is a place that wraps your arms around each other uh, and leans in on each other. So I, I, I do want to just recognize Carl because I think he was special. And we're going to continue to have lots of good things that happen here. And um, the team's ready to, to really do their work this season in his memory. Um, a kid who lit up the room. Um, this place, uh, Salem State, means a lot for so many. Um, I was recalling earlier that when I went here, <clears throat> you could actually work your butt off all summer. Like if you hustled, you could make enough to pay your tuition and fees. And unfortunately, you know, through years, um, that's just not possible anymore. Uh, so students who are here take on debt and work two and three jobs. And I've talked to employers in our community and across the state, and when we talk about who we're hiring, they talk about Salem State students because they are working and managing time and you know having that work experience, whether you know it's an entry level job or something tied to what you might be majoring in, made a big difference. And thinking about the opportunity to lower costs for families, that pressure that comes with. I could see the relief when the governor said, we're gonna make public higher ed more accessible. There was a collective sigh of not having that pressure to figure out how to make all the pieces work and am I gonna have enough to go next semester and do I have to wait or am I gonna be able to take a full load? That, that's what this announcement means to people and in a place like Salem State, a community that shaped me and helped me make who I am, playing hoop here, having close teammates, dealing with the sorts of things that you get to deal with when uh, you're a student and trying to make your way. Um, the, this community spirit, I think, is an example of a core strength in our public colleges and universities. And it's something that I think makes this mass grant plus financial aid expansion just a major force multiplier, not just for the students who are here and the staff who are supporting our kids, but also for our entire state. Because our state colleges and universities provide inclusive, democratic access to not only education, but to careers, to economic mobility, to civic empowerment, some of which we saw on display here earlier. And more than that, these investments we make in access to public higher ed produce returns for Massachusetts. It is great that we have so many higher ed institutions in the Commonwealth, public and private. But the data is pretty clear. 75% of our public higher ed graduates, they're staying in Massachusetts. They're the ones that after they get to their degree, you know, and we don't talk about this enough, the huge value they're adding, the graduates here are future teachers and nurses and small business owners and entrepreneurs and lieutenant governors and elected <laughs> officials. <laughs> and the mayor mentioned this, you know, they're the folks, our grads from public higher ed institutions across many gateway cities and regions who stick around, who dig in, who invest their lives in making their communities better, raising families, mission-driven. When they succeed, we succeed. We're investing in our next leaders. So by making public college and university free for lower-income students, more affordable for middle-class families, we're helping to grow the next generation of people who are gonna be sitting in those seats, in our seats, and the work that happens. It's an investment in the power of equity to unleash the full potential of all the people in our Commonwealth. We need everybody in this game of making Massachusetts great. And this, this opportunity, uh, this funding, this program is gonna make that more possible. It's also an investment in our communities because of the work that our graduates do. These public campuses are centers of economic and cultural anchors for cities and for regions. It's critical to our state's future and we are so honored and privileged to be able to play in a role in making it more accessible for all, making it more affordable to future generations. This is what our students deserve. Everyone working here is working just as hard as folks in elite private colleges. And they're doing it with a lot more baggage. We're gonna make it a little bit easier. I hope you can tell we're both passionate about this, and some of that's because we come from working class backgrounds. The governor was a very good waitress, I was a horrible waitress. <laughs> but we both know the val I was a good lifeguard, I was a good lifeguard, that's true. 
Um, we both know the value of hard work, and we know students are doing it, and this is one way that we can contribute to making a more powerful opportunity to make it more equitable, to make it easier, and to unleash the full opportunities in our Commonwealth. And uh, so grateful to be, and privileged to be here with all of you, to make this announcement, to be able to lean in on this work. And we've got a whole cadre of people who are making that happen. Um, and it's now my honor to introduce the head of our UMass system, a great opportunity as well to ensure that folks who are at our UMass system have the same engagement, the same opportunities, the same access. And we've got a great leader leading that institution, putting UMass on the map in Massachusetts and outside of Massachusetts in so many ways. And so it's my privilege to introduce UMass President Marty Meehan. Thank you very much, and I'm delighted to be here on this uh, really important occasion. What a bold initiative by the Healy Driscoll administration and the legislature to make a statement, and this is bold, as bold as any statement I've seen on making sure that people who don't have the resources can come and get a college education. This is remarkable, and I'm delighted to be part of it. I want to thank our, our host, John Keenan, uh, for having us here. And I commented when I came in what a beautiful uh, hall this is, I guess the Good News Hall. But when you mention all the work that Freddie Berry did, I don't know anyone in my lifetime who talked more about Salem University than, than he did. And uh, thank you for mentioning uh, Fred. Um, look, I grew up in Lowell, and um, neither of my parents went to college. My sisters and I were the first in our family to have an opportunity to go to college. and we graduated from UMass Lowell. And to build on what the Lieutenant Governor said, all of us, my sisters and I, were able to work on weekends and in the summertime, and we were able to pay for our education. We graduated from UMass Lowell with no debt. That's impossible to do today. And this initiative is so important to making sure that everyone has that opportunity to achieve their full potential in life. That's what this country is all about. And if we can't do that, then we're not true to what this, the basis upon which this country was founded and the basis upon which the Constitution, if this Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which focused on the need to give everyone an education, this is critical to that. Now, we have worked hard at UMass. Uh, since I've been at UMass, we put 67% more into need-based financial aid at UMass. We now will have this year $395 million for need-based financial aid. We all have to keep vigilant, though. And let's not let the gov federal government off the hook. They should have doubled the Pell Grant in this country long ago, and they need to do it now. So um, I'm just delighted with the, with the Healy Driscoll administration, not just this initiative, all of the initiatives. The comments have been made. We're an innovation economy in Massachusetts. If you want to have a successful innovation economy, you have to have a well-educated workforce. If you want a well-educated workforce, as great as our private institutions are, they don't educate the people of Massachusetts. It's the public institutions that do that. So we have a responsibility to make sure that every person that lives in this commonwealth, that whether they're documented or undocumented, thank you for that as well, uh, to make sure they have that chance to achieve their full potential. This goes a long way towards that. I thank the uh, members of the legislature who've been so uh, great on this. I would urge you, I know that uh, John mentioned that there was a reception afterwards, but I know the State House this, this, this day is very important. Make sure you get back there uh, for those <laughs> supplemental budgets. A very important uh, partner with all of us are the community colleges. Community colleges in this state play a really important role in making sure there's open access. Our community colleges uh, have students that are more diverse than any in the country, and it plays a, such an important role. We rely on community college students at UMass. We love that when we get those transfers because they're ready to go, they graduate on time, and they're outstanding. So I, I want to introduce the president of Mount Ch Wachusett's Community College, uh, Vander uh, Jim. Vander Hooven, Vander Jim Hooven. <laughs> Jim Vander Hooven. Um, he does a great job at, uh, they, look, they told me who I was introducing when I walked in the door, I didn't know. Um, but Jim has done a great job at Mount Wachusett, as all the community colleges are, 
and we can't achieve our full potential without a strong community college system. I'd like to th thank uh, me and Marty for uh, <laughs> introducing me this morning. Um, thank you very much. Uh, next time I'll, I'll figure in how to put the word president in there, but we'll, we'll be good. Uh, Governor Healy, uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, um, my name is Jim Vander Hooven. And I'm the president of Mount Wachusett Community College in Gardner, and I'm here uh, with many of my colleagues from the community colleges, state universities, uh, and the UMass system to let you know that the decision that you've made today, that you've announced today, uh, our hearts are full. I'd like to share uh, the day that I decided as an individual and as a leader in higher education uh, to dedicate my life and my career to community colleges where we serve students who have the greatest need, uh, who are working full time, who have families to support, who experience housing and food insecurity on a regular basis, who have childcare insecurity. I will never forget the one night I had just become a dean in a non-traditional higher ed uh, institution. And I saw a student walking by my office who I knew to be uh, a single mom, who I knew to be working. Uh, and I yelled out of my office and I said, why haven't you registered for the next semester? And I said it just like that. And the student stopped and turned back and looked at me with tears in her eyes and said, I don't even know how I'm going to make rent next month. And you're asking why I haven't registered? And that moment was the moment that I began dedicating my life to access in higher education. And since that moment, higher education has become more and more expensive. And since that moment, support for higher education has become smaller and smaller. But as we have seen with your administration, the support is turning around and we now have an opportunity to serve students to create access for higher education, not just for the community colleges, because when the community colleges thrive, the state universities are going to thrive. And when the state universities thrive, UMass is thriving. And when public higher education is thriving in Massachusetts, our workforce will be thriving in Massachusetts. I can say on behalf of my colleagues that today it is a real honor to be serving as presidents and as leaders of our community colleges, but we couldn't do that without the faculty and the staff that we also need to support, and we most certainly can't do that without the incredible students that are served by UMass, the state universities, and our community colleges. And it is a great honor to welcome a current Salem State student, Nicholas Alves, who is currently an education major, uh, to the podium to share his remarks. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Nicholas Alves. Um, thank you for the introduction. I'm currently a junior here at Salem State. I'm an education major. I work for the uh, financial aid department here as well. And just gonna keep it short and sweet for you guys. <laughs> um, as a Salem State student, it means a lot that we will be able to get this opportunity to be able to have the payment lowered. I mean, it's going to help a lot with 
students being able to come in here or give more opportunities for students to be able to be here without having to purely focus, without having to split their focus into academics, into working, into how will they get their bills paid for, all the while trying to keep their grades up. As a Pell Grant recipient myself, it's, a, it's very important to me because um, it gives me the chance to fully focus on school while not having to think about, okay, well, I gotta work today, I gotta work, do this, gotta do that. It's just about being in school and about being focused. And a lot of times students are able to fully dedicate themselves to their academics because of their financial stresses and it ends up being a detriment to them. So seeing a program like this and it being announced to this scale is honestly amazing. And I know it'll help current students, potential students, and honestly, it'll help plenty of people be able to even go to college in the first place. I thank you for this opportunity, and <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Nick. Believe it or not, I was able to keep a secret. So we were supposed to make this announcement today and we were supposed to get a student to speak about this. And we weren't supposed to tell them all the details, right? And I actually kept the secret. But when you were laying that out, Governor, Nick turned to me and said, wow, <laughs> wow. And I think that sums it up, right? Uh, absolutely incredible. So thank you for sharing your remarks and, and for being an outstanding student here at Salem State. So now it's my privilege to introduce the Commissioner of Education, of higher education. Um, I was in uh, D.C. about a month ago, and I bumped into the former commissioner of higher education here in the Commonwealth. And of course, he came up to said, how's Noe doing? Because I think he probably had a little bit of something to do encouraging you to come to the Commonwealth, and we're fortunate and glad that he did. And so I told uh, Commissioner Santiago that he is doing an outstanding job. Uh, Noe coming in, hitting the ground running, and doing a wonderful job reaching out uh, to the presidents and understanding uh, uh, the ground here in, in the Commonwealth. It's a little different than Pennsylvania, I think, right? It's a little different than Pennsylvania, but he has done an outstanding job. And, and financial aid is one of his areas of expertise. And I think I can also see some of his fingerprints on this program here today. So it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome to our campus, Noe Ortega, the Commissioner of Higher Education. Thank you so much. What a pleasure it is to be here alongside the governor and the lieutenant governor, but also a number of leaders from our community colleges, state U's, UMass, along with individuals who work at those institutions. So it's an absolute pleasure to be here and to thank everyone for what they've done. I wish that I could go back, uh, President Vanderhoeven, to that student who you spoke about so eloquently in your remarks and say to them that they had available the same thing that we we're making available to students here today at that time. I often, as we were coming up here, my team and I were discussing the remarks, which I'm going off script and it's making them probably very nervous, <laughs> um, to, to actually highlight what are the things that make Massachusetts unique and different, right? In addition to the first that the governor laid out and the lieutenant governor as well with these programs, what we're being able to do in terms of making higher education truly affordable for most is that we're leaders. But as you can tell by what everyone said, we're not just leaders for some, we're leaders for all. And this right here is a program that ensures that we can do more for equity by closing the gaps to make sure that college is truly affordable for those students who need it the most. Coming in and being able to offer tuition and fees at no cost to eligible students is a big deal. But we didn't stop there with this expansion. If you look at what else this is going to do, it's going to make families who are moderate and middle income as well eligible, but maybe not free, or, or no cost tuition and fees, but certainly half of their out-of-pocket expenses will be covered as well. So families making $100,000 or less in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will also be eligible for some of these dollars. And we can only do that because of the work of this administration and all the members who made that happen. So thank you for making that happen as well. Thank you. Today's announcement is critical to the administration. I have the honor of coming up here to speak both for the department and our team, but also for the chair, Gabrielli, from the Board of Higher Ed, who wasn't able to join us today. But he would have mentioned that the board 
over the past couple of years has spent a lot of time making sure that they understand how we could be strategic in our investments to hire in public higher education, particularly to make uh, college more affordable for more students, truly affordable for those who do the, uh, need it the most, and more affordable for those um, who often get left out of these conversations. And so I really want to highlight the work that he's done along with the board to set the stage for me to step in and continue what they've been doing alongside our institutional leaders and really deliver on these kinds of commitments. We are making and we're fulfilling truly the promise of making college more affordable and accessible to all. And this is a huge step in that right direction. I would be remiss if I didn't stand up here and call attention to the fact that when the cameras are off and we all step away from the podium, there will be individuals at our institutions left to continue to carry the weight of this investment. And so I really want to thank the financial aid directors. I was a financial aid person as well and along with the, uh, uh, an education student. I want to thank all of our financial aid directors for making this happen as well as our faculty who are gonna spend time with our students in the classroom to make sure that they're not just eligible to go into our institutions, but they can persist and complete, which is equally important as we stand here and applaud this program. So I do wanna also end with one important thing. In just one year, Governor Healy, along with Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and uh, members of the legislature have allowed for college access to become more affordable, making tuition, equity possible for undocumented students, really improving access for people to our community colleges, and now making our public system of higher education accessible to all. That's a pretty good track record in just one year. Phenomenal. phenomenal. So with that, I just want to make sure that I can turn the mic back over to Governor Healy as she makes some concluding remarks, but also maybe answers a couple of questions as well. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you to uh, all in the various departments and administrations because you are the ones who actually made this possible. Um, and we are so thrilled to be able to be here today to announce that. Um, say, and, and again, thank you to Salem State University for hosting us and for all of our speakers, especially Nick. And we want all the students out there to get the message today. Remember, this is prospective for the, the spring semester, but it's also retroactive to this fall. So I know departments will you know, be ready to, to work with students across the state to take advantage of this great new program. Um, we're happy to take any questions on topic. And if not, we'll get off to the reception. Any from the media on topic? No, you good? Okay, great. Have a wonderful afternoon. All right, thank you.